Good evening, good evening to the esteemed listeners of the 2020 Vision Podcast. This is Mike Chuck 1212. Today, I want to bring to you a quote from Lord Tywin of the House Lannister, Hand of the King and Warden of the West. Lord Tywin says that the lion does not concern himself with the opinions of the sheep. 2020 was good, man. It's been a long, long time since I've been in this seat sitting in front of this microphone. And I'm ecstatic to be back. Um, I want to tell y'all a little story, though. I want to get right into it and tell y'all this little story. So I was watching HBO probably about a year ago, a year and a half ago, something like that. Um, And any of you, you know, any of you out there that watch Game of Thrones or you watch uh, or just anything that comes on HBO, the promos, every time they throw a promo out there at you, it, it's it's always worthwhile. It always catches your attention. I'm watching this promo with this, you know, this black girl. <clears throat> black girl. She's cute. You know what I mean? She looks regular. She has natural hair, dark complexion. Um... And when I say regular, I don't mean that as an insult. She looks like somebody that I've seen somewhere before. You know what I'm saying? She she looks like she doesn't doesn't put me in the mind of like somebody like an Amber Rose or like a, a Sanaa Lathan who looks untouchable. You know what I'm saying? This girl looks looks touchable. She looks like I've seen her before. She looks like regular people. You know what I'm saying? She looked like somebody I would holler at if I saw her somewhere. Like, hey, what's good? I'm watching this promo for this show. And it really just looked like it's a it's a cool show, you know what I'm saying? They got a little music playing on the um, on the promo and whatnot. Name of the show is Insecure. I know everybody's listening to this now, like nigga, you late? No, I'm talking about when the show first came out. Um, I'm just now speaking on this, but I'm talking about when the show first came out. Um, that was the start of the first season, and. We are currently in the second season. Next week will be the finale of the show, um, of the second season, rather. Um, I'm certain that HBO is going to pick up a third and fourth season for uh, Insecure because it's just a great show. Um, I just I just wanted to bring that up real quick to say, I'm, no, I'm not about to like dig deep into the show and, and discuss different nuances of the show and stuff like that. I just wanted to bring that up to say, um, that Issa Rae and the whole Insecure cast, they are really putting on for black people right now. Like, I just, I just hope that my listeners pay attention to that show. I hope y'all watch that show. If you don't watch that show, you should check it out. I got an HBO Now code. <laughs> you can hit me on one of my social media sites and... I'd be happy to give you the uh, username and password for it so you can check it out. It's a great show. Um, my motto for my podcast is that the to be said shit should be said shit. Well, Insecure is a show that should be seen because of how real it is and how relative it is to the life of young, educated, professional black people. Black people like me, black people like you, who are not too far removed from the hood, but are also not too far uh, away from or not cl- as close to, rather, corporate America as they would like to be, is not not as patched in as they would like to be, um, just from a professional standpoint. Um, it's just so relative. You really, if you haven't, if you haven't checked that show out, you should really check that show out. The next thing that I want to jump right into I definitely don't want to like gloss over this, but I must say uh, thoughts and prayers go out to all the victims of Hurricane Harvey, um, as well as the thoughts and prayers are going to go out to the victims of Hurricane Irma. I believe it is Um, Hurricane Harvey uh, was uh, was an occurrence at a very, 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 very tough point in my life. And. That's a uh, majority the reason why I haven't recorded in so long is because of what was going on late July, all of August. Um, 
I did. I, I, obviously, I did have a birthday. Um, I did, you know, pass a birthday. I turned 35. Uh, and thank you to everybody that wished me a happy birthday. I really appreciate it. Um, I went to see the J. Cole concert here in Dallas. Um, I did a few different things, but <clears throat> there was one shining thing that was going on during my during during that time in my life that was uh, really really trying. With that being said, I did a show um, and I talked about how I was preparing or how I had been trying my best to prepare for uh, the time frame in which my parents may depart from this world. I want to take everything back that I said. I'm not at all prepared for that shit. Okay. That's the end of that conversation. Um, but definitely the thoughts and prayers of, of, of the entire staff of the 2020 vision podcast goes out to, uh, the victims of hurricane Harvey, um, Houston, uh, Missouri city, um, Port Arthur, Galveston, you know, any of those places out there, man, Hey, love thoughts and prayers, man. Now, since I've mentioned Houston and Hurricane Harvey um, and different surrounding cities of Houston, I want to mention something else. I want to talk about something else real quick. Um, there's a lot of, um, there's a whole lot of correspondence, a whole lot of news and a whole lot of talk about um, the Trump administration uh, currently making an attempt to um, do away with the uh, DACA. Um, which is sort of a regulation that was put together by the Obama administration um, to, but here it is, here it is. It, it's called Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, D-A-C-A. Uh, it's an American immigration policy established by the Obama administration uh, that allows certain illegal immigrants who entered the country as minors to receive a renewable two-year period of deferred action from deportation and eligibility for a work permit. Okay. So, um, basically, um, depending on certain levels of eligibility, if you were a minor as an illegal, um, the United States will, uh, give you a two year deferred, uh, permitted time frame to get a work permit and, you know, work as a U.S. citizen and work on becoming a U.S. citizen. It gave you that sort of leeway, if you will. Um, now, I bring that up because, once again, the Trump administration is trying to do away with that. Okay? They're trying to take that opportunity away from um, our, uh, our Latino um, brothers and sisters in the United States of America. Our uh, immigrants, if you will. In the United States of America, and it is funny to me that nah, fuck that. It's not funny to me. It's fucked up to me, and it's pissy to me. It's crabby to me how an administration of government officials, elected government officials, can do something so heinous, so thoughtless, so heartless, um, or make an attempt to do something like that during this sort of time. Um, you know, it's a lot of catastrophes that are, you know, just rolling and rolling and rolling and just hitting us and hitting us and hitting us. And it's like, you know, trying to recover from a heart attack and getting kicked in the fucking dick. You know what I'm saying? In the process. You know what I'm saying? Or like trying to recover from being shot three times in your stomach and having a motherfucker come chop the rest of your leg off. You know what I'm saying? Like, Damn, you know what I'm saying? Get like, let, let me. Can I stand up real quick? You know, it's, it's some of Latino America is in Houston, Texas right now, uh, and some of the people that this um, this action, this DACA, um, directly refers to and directly affects, are in Houston right now. They don't even have anywhere to live right now. They don't even have a place to call home right now. They lost everything. And for a, a group of elected officials to put together an action 
to do away with something like this during such a time brings a person like myself to wonder how in the fuck do we even elect these officials in the first fucking place? You know what I'm saying? I know for a fact I didn't elect these motherfuckers. I didn't vote for these motherfuckers. And people jumped on me this year because I, I chose not to vote. You can say what the fuck you want about that. I'm proud in saying that I chose not to vote. I chose not to put my hand in any pot that was going to elect either one of these bitch ass people who don't represent the people that I come from. You know what I'm saying? Um, but these elected officials thought it prudent during this such time frame to do something like this. And I find it cowardice. I find it heartless. And for lack of better words, I, I just really just find it to be a bitch ass move. And I'm offended by it. And I think all of America should be offended by it. Um, just simply put, <clears throat> that action that the Obama administration put together in 2012, I, I, if I'm not mistaken, they put it together in early summer of 2012. The action that they put together refers directly to minors. I want to read it one more time if I can. Childhood, deferred action for childhood arrivals. Childhood arrivals. Allow certain illegal immigrants who enter the country as minors to receive. Minors. Once again. So you old ass motherfucking elected officials. Got to figure this fucking thing out. Because it's kids we talking about. And no matter who you are in the world. Where you are in the world. As an adult man. As an elected official. As an adult man. At any facet. At any at any capacity in this country at any capacity in the world it is yours and my responsibility to look after minors and children we're supposed to see to the well-being of minors and children that is our responsibility as men no matter what your fucking race is that's our responsibility as men as protectors as the lions in the world we're supposed to take care of our cubs no matter what their skin color is. And I find it to be a cowardly act to do something like this during such a time. It's very disrespectful. It's just, it's just disheartening, man. Um, it really is disheartening. Um, you know, I served four years in the United States Marine Corps to, to come from a place like the one where I come from, Little Rock, Arkansas. And I know uh, I know a lot of people that are, that are listening to this right now. I know you've seen uh, in the past few months, I know you've seen a lot of news about uh, Little Rock, Arkansas and, and the, the goings on, if you will, in Little Rock, Arkansas. But just, just, I'm just saying that one place as an example. There's so many Latino Americans um, there's so many black Americans. There's so many of us that come from, um, that don't come from rather Western European cultures. There's so many of us that aren't white, that come from impoverished communities, that come from, you know, much maligned communities. And, and come, we come from, from nothing. You know what I mean? We come from relatively nothing in this country. But we go to serve it. <laughs> we are the first to go and serve it. And the people that we serve under, like Donald Trump, like George W. Bush, like Hillary Clinton, you know, these people do not come from the places that we come from and would not serve the country that we serve. We've done more for our country than any of them have. But these elected officials who would not serve in any capacity, truly serve, get to tell us what to do. It's funny. Um, it's disrespectful, but it's funny. I mean, it's, it's the way the cookie crumbles. 
Lions for Lambs.